Hello, and welcome to FBLA PBL's webinar titled, Involving Your Elected Officials. This session, offered by an FBLA PBL veteran who works on Capitol Hill, will provide tips for advisors to help connect their students with elected government officials. My name is Marisa Preuss, and I'm the Communications and Publications Manager. I will serve as today's moderator. We encourage you to submit questions at any time during the broadcast using the GoToWebinar toolbar at the top right of your screen. We will go over questions at the end of the presentation. And as a reminder, we will be recording this webinar and it will be posted in the advisors only area of our website. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn it over to our membership director, Lisa Smothers, who will introduce our new guest for today's webinar. Thank you, Marisa. Today's guest speaker is on his second term as Professional Division National Secretary Treasurer. He currently serves as the Communications Director for a U.S. Congressman in Washington, D.C., holds a Bachelor of Arts in Politics from Hendricks College in Arkansas, and a Master of Arts in Public Communication from American University in Washington, D.C. His journey in FBLA PBL began in 1998 as a member of the FBLA Middle Level Division. He served as a state officer in Arkansas FBLA and PBL, and as both a PBL National Parliamentarian and a PBL National Southern Region Vice President. He's a strong advocate for FBLA PBL, noting the skills, self-confidence, and networking the organization offers its members lead to success, not only in business, but in any career, especially politics. Please welcome Brad Howard. Thank you, Lisa, and thank you all for joining uh, us today. As an FBLA PBLM, I know firsthand how this organization can empower young people. Now more than ever, career and technical education programs, or CTE, are needed to help ensure the strength of our workforce, global competitiveness, and the economic health of our nation. With nearly 16 million students taking CTE courses at the secondary and post-secondary levels, the impact that CTE can have locally, statewide, and nationally is enormous. One of FBLA PBL's nine goals is to develop character, prepare for useful citizenship, and foster patriotism. And that's the inspiration behind today's presentation. Our organization prides itself on its relationship with the community through community service projects or partnerships with local businesses. However, we often forget there's a group of people who make decisions that directly affect our local chapter or school, and these are our elected public officials. Reaching out to these officials is key for any organization. By sharing success stories, raising awareness, and developing key relationships with these decision makers, they are likely to be more sympathetic to our mission, pledge, and goals. And this is no more true than when it comes to funding or budget decisions and education laws. Given the current economic climate, school boards and city councils across the nation are slashing budgets, and typically extracurricular funding is often the first to go. To many officials, budgetary cuts are nothing more than numbers on a spreadsheet. But if your chapter can make it about young people's lives and preparing them for the future, those numbers are harder to cut. These officials are familiar with you, your chapter, and its successes. They could rise to your defense, saving critical funding. As well, the President has also made clear that one of his top domestic priorities in the next two years will be education reform. And FBLA PBL should be part of that debate. By getting to know and developing a relationship with your representatives, your members of Congress, and their staffs, it is, it is a tremendous foot in the door for this important debate. Now, there are two ways to get the attention of your public officials. Obviously, the first and most direct is to lobby them. The First Amendment of the Constitution gives us the right to petition our government, and too many of us never take advantage of that. Then there's publicity. By getting FBLA PBL in the news, you raise your profile to the people in the community, or in the words that are sure to gather elected officials' attention to voters. There are many options available for communicating and interacting with elected officials. Letters, faxes, telephone calls, personal visits, attending events, lobbying, and email. If you're trying to influence something that's going to happen immediately, oftentimes fax, letters, and phone calls are best. Email is an option as well, especially when communicating with staff members you worked for previously. But remember, congressional staffers and employees of elected officials are usually inundated with emails. So here are some basic guidelines to lobbying for when you talk to your elected officials from the local level on up to the congressional level. First of all, you obviously need to know your officials. 
know their background, learn as much as possible as you can about your federal, state, and local officials and where they stand on the issues. Usually there's a copy of their biography and information about their positions on their websites. Identify yourself. Um, you need to identify yourself as a constituent, uh, you know, obviously so they know that you're a voter in their district, and that you identify your school and as a member of FBLA PBL so they know why you're there. Be prepared. Know your issues and know the program that you support and the impact it will have on your organization. Any research and specifically numbers that you have will help your case. Finally, be specific. State the action that you want the policymaker to take. Wherever possible, refer to a specific piece of legislation by its number. A little more about lobbying, especially when it comes to Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C. The U.S. Congress in Washington is where a lot of important decisions are made that directly affect our organization. Imagine if at least one local chapter in all 435 congressional districts met with their congressperson. Imagine what that would do for FBLA PBL's awareness on Capitol Hill. Most of the times, organizations had to pay big bucks for high-powered lobbyists, but in our case, there is simply no need. The faces of the students in the members' home districts will trump a highly paid D.C. lobbyist any day. Your meeting doesn't even have to be in Washington. More and more members of Congress are going home every weekend, and the legislative calendar provides many days called district work periods. There is usually one or two weeks a month that members of Congress spend in their districts or back in their state. This provides a perfect opportunity for your local chapter officers. Personal visits with influential policymakers often lay the groundwork for future communication with the official and his or her staff. When your students or FBLA PBL officers are planning a meeting, they should make the appointment at least a few weeks in advance. The day before the appointment, they should call to confirm and they should be on time. In face-to-face -face meetings, your students should highlight key issues and leave behind a fact sheet as a reminder of essential points you want that official to have on hand. It's important to continue developing ties with your policymakers and staff throughout the year. In addition, contacting them about important issues, your students could extend them, could extend invitations to speak at chapter meetings or events, have your officers even go so far as to attend city council meetings. Oftentimes, local chapter officer teams will appoint a student to serve as a city council rep or as the government relations liaison for elected officials. And remember, elected officials love free publicity, especially when surrounded by, surrounded by students and while supporting education. So be sure to offer them to your events and take full advantage with as many pictures and videos as you can get and then put that in the local paper. Remember to remind your students to congratulate their legislators on honors received or elections won, to thank them for a positive vote on your issue, and to share positive information about FBLA PBO. I can guarantee you from my own personal experience that public officials appreciate but seldom receive thank you letters for actions taken. If your students are among those who show appreciation, trust me, they will be remembered. Do your homework with your students during officer training. They should be knowledgeable about FBLA PBL and its mission, which is to bring business and education together in a positive working relationship through innovative leadership and career development programs. Part of your officer training should include a briefing on who the public officials are, from city council to U.S. senator, and what are the important and current issues affecting your chapter on the local level and on the overall organization as a whole. Some meeting tr media training will also be helpful to your officers. Many chapters invite local TV news anchors or local paper editors to come to their training and give them tips on how to talk to the media. Other chapters practice giving interviews on camera and let the officers watch themselves back. You'd be surprised what you learn from watching your own self-interview. Also, officers should have some practice in public speaking and presentation in case they're ever called to give a presentation on FBLA PBL's behalf. And finally, when you do set up for a meeting, uh, these are just a few of the tips to keep in mind when meeting with elected officials. You and your students should be punctual and patient. It is not uncommon for an, for an official to be late or have a meeting interrupted due to their crowded schedule or all, uh, last minute votes. Be flexible. If there are two or more people going to the appointment, you should also appoint a spokesperson to, identi to be identified as to lead the discussion. After introductions and handshakes, state the purpose of your visit. You and your students are there to share your expertise on the issue you're discussing and to promote your organization. Be prepared to share FBLA PBL success stories to make your point and discuss how our organization services the community 
and it's an important role in that effort. Cite specific examples of your chapter's successes in meeting the needs of your area and emphasize why maintaining an investment in career and technical education is so important to students. Allow the official to share his or her own thoughts with you. Though you may not agree, this gives you and your students the chance to respond based on your own knowledge and expertise. Wrap up the meeting by summarizing the major points of the discussion and what information you want them to leave with, and of course, thank them for their time. Now this slide shows you a little bit about just uh, on a, how a member of Congress on Capitol Hill, how their staff is designed. And this is important to know so you know who you're talking to and how it relates to the member. Obviously, at the top, you have the member of Congress. Underneath him is the chief of staff who manages all the staff. Um, the scheduler and executive assistant um, is the one who handles the congressman's schedule. And that's who you contact if you want to set up a meeting. Um, the scheduler maintains everything from interviews to meetings with constituents to lobbyists. So you always go through the scheduler. It's good to know that person by name. And then when you're done with the interview or the meeting, send a thank you letter to the scheduler because they do a lot of work and seldom get thanked. And trust me, if they remember that you were kind to work with and you send a thank you letter, you've got your foot in the door for the next time you want to meet with the member. Um, there's the district director who manages the district staff, and they're all back in the, the district that the congressperson is from. Um, the staff assistant usually manages the front office of the Washington office. The legislative director manages all the policy issues uh, for the congressman, and there's a legislative correspondent under him or her, which answers mail given to the office, and then there are legislative assistants, which are known as LAs, and these are the, Congress per the, the member of Congress's point person on these issues. So, for instance, an LA could be assigned to education, business, and financial services, and those are the issues that LA specifically deals with. So, obviously, you want to find your business and education LA and develop a relationship with that person because that person has the eyes and the ears of the member. Even if you don't get to meet with the member, meeting with the LA is just as good most of the times. And then, of course, there's the communications director and press secretary and the communications staff, which manages the congressman's media relations services as spokesperson and deals with the media. There are also interns in every congressional office from the local level up to the, the DC level. Oftentimes, they're unpaid, but they're worth it because of the connections you make and the experience you get is unbeatable anywhere else. Um, it, it, it's just important to understand that there are several people that work for your legislators. They may not always have direct contact, and you may not always get an appointment with the member. But remind, remind your students that their staff have the eyes and ears of the legislatures and have a huge influence on how they vote and how they act. And most importantly, when you go to the meeting, look sharp. Um, remind the students to dress in the official FBLA PBL uniform. If they have one or if they don't, normal business attire is fine. Um, you know, if they have a face-to-face -face meeting, you want to look like a business professional, and it's important that they do that. Um, you should also follow up with a brief thank you letter and any information they may have promised the policymaker or the staff who were instrumental in helping your, you and your students. So send them a thank you letter, and, and if you promised them anything during the meeting, send that follow-up information as well. And, off, and, and two, an important part to remember is to keep the relationship with the office over time. Um, develop and maintain a good relationship with the staff, maybe the most effective means um, that you're going to be able to promote FBLA PBL and making your concerns heard. So be sure it's, it's a, you're staying in touch with them throughout the year, um, not just you know once a year or just when you need something. And like I said, beyond lobbying, another way to give members attention is through publicity. Um, the great thing about publicity is that it gets members' attention because they're seeing you in the news. And of course, they love free publicity, and that's a big part. It's free for everyone. Um, a strong media campaign using newspapers, radio, television can reach a large number of people with the message about FBLA PBL issues and events. In fact, the term public relations was coined because it's all about relationships. There are three things every local journalist wants, regardless of the medium. They want unique, timely, and local stories. Local reporters want something unique. So. You know, dog bites man really isn't that unique of a headline, but if man bites dog, that gets attention. Um, you want timely, you want issues that are topical, what's being talked about in the news, what's relevant at the time, and local. Obviously, uh, you know, the local paper wants to cover local issues. and You can get any kind of national news online now or cable news, so they want local news and local issues and how it affects the local citizens. And if it's TV, obviously they're going to want visual. They're going to want something that looks good on TV a strong visual component can almost guarantee they'll show up. Uh, the stories journalists file are often fit into three distinct categories. 
human interest or uh, which are just you know ordinary people overcoming extraordinary things uh, versus stories which are conflicts between this group and that in my business it's often Democrats versus Republicans and then informative awareness which are simply stories that include everything from upcoming events in town to information disseminated from the government remember even if reporters don't show up to your event you can still get publicity email them one or two of your best pictures of an event with a caption and list everyone in the picture and I guarantee you they'll run that picture in the paper because you're doing the work for them. Um, if you're concentrating on your public relations program in your local area, you should be able to develop a media list by calling or visiting websites of the newspapers, televisions, and radio stations in the community. Knowing who the journalists are, what they need, and how to get in touch with them will help your chapter build the public awareness that can help you be successful. Now, finally, I have a last slide I wanted to talk about a little bit of areas I think FBLA PBO can improve upon in regards to government relations and publicity. Uh, often, you know, we do a lot of good things in this organization, but we're often almost too humble about it. Don't be afraid to promote good, to good deeds or activities uh, that your students do. You have a perfect opportunity coming up to promote your chapter and your service projects during FBLA PBL week, which of course will be on February 6th to the 12th. Um, publicize the different events that you'll be doing each day of this important week. Invite a legislator to attend a special chapter meeting, take part in FBLA PBL Community Service Day on Saturday, February 12th. Your chapter could work with the March of Dimes, volunteer at a homeless shelter, conduct a blood drive. Possibilities really are endless. This is an excellent time to inform the public about the many leadership opportunities our organization provides. And the momentum of a national event provides even the more perfect occasion to spotlight career and technical education. Don't always assume the media knows what's going on. Even with reporters I have the best relationships with, I email a news release two weeks prior to an event and then fax it to them. I send the news release again the day before and follow up with a phone call the morning of the event. Finally, become familiar with the issues that affect the organization. The Carl D. Perkins Career and Technical Education Improvement Act is one of our most important pieces of federal legislation that helps career and technical education and FBLA PBL with funding. Keeping our government officials informed about the benefits and mission of our organization should be part of your chapter's public relations program. The Association for Career and Technical Education, or ACTE, is in conjunction with the career and technical organizations that uh, have published a book called the CTSO Guide for Accessing Federal Perkins Funds, and that'll help you provide that'll help provide you with more information. Staying on top, staying on top of current events and important issues. Makes your students more aware, more confident, and better prepared for the future. And so now I think we'll turn it over for questions. Great. Um, we did have a couple of questions that came in uh, during the presentation, so we'll get to those now. If we do run out of time, um, we will in email you individually your answer to the question, or please feel free to email Brad anytime at the email address you see on your screen. Okay, it looks like Monica from Florida wants to know um, how she can contact her senator or congressman. Where can she find out um, who they are and how to contact them? Sure. Uh, there, there are a lot of places to do that, but the, the easiest one and probably the most, uh, uh, the one that's most designed for empowering voters is a website called projectvotesmart.org. That's P R O J E C T. V O T E S M A R T dot org. Project Vote Smart is a service provided to empower voters. It's particularly handy when it comes down to elections, um, and you can see your candidates' positions on the issues. Uh, but Project Vote Smart, you simply there's a bar at the top where you put in your information, uh, and you put in your address, and it shows you exactly who your legislators are, from senator down to state legislator, um, and then. There's a link to their websites, and on almost every legislator's website, there's a contact feature uh, where you can contact them online, which is a great way. And we also mentioned there's phone numbers on there. You can call their office. Um, but honestly, the, the, the best way to get your message to members is through um, it is a face-to-face -face meeting with someone on their staff or with the elected official themselves. A lot of groups also will do what's called phone banking, and they'll um, have all their members call about an issue. Um, and, or encourage people in the community to do so as well. So, um, but again, you know, if you have a good relationship with someone on the staff, you can just shoot them a quick email and let them know how this issue will affect um, 
you know, your organization and affect career and technical organizations as, as, as a whole. Great. Thank you, Brad. Okay, Dina from Wisconsin. Um, she wants to know what the difference is between a state senator and a U.S. senator. Sure. Uh, there are many different elected officials on many different levels. Um, obviously, on, on the city level, there's your city council, which are elected just to make decisions for your city. On a statewide level, there are officials who are elected to make and pass laws in your state capital that are particular just to your state. And most states have a state house and the state senate. There are a few exceptions, Nebraska for once being one of them. But um, you just have, you have a state house member and a state senator, and they go to your state capitol and, and make decisions for your state. Um, and so they represent a particular area um, that you live in. And then you, and then every state sends a delegation to Washington, D.C., which meets in the U.S. Capitol building, and they make decisions um, that uh, are particular to the entire country, that pass federal laws. And your representatives there, every state sends at least one member to the House of Representatives. And however many House or Congressmen your state gets depends on your state's population. Um, every state at least gets one, but some states like California can get up to 54 House members. Um, but on the Senate side, every state gets two regardless of population. So there are two uh, U.S. Senators for every state and uh, any number of House members that go to the U.S. Capitol building in Washington and make decisions and pass laws that affect the entire country. So it depends on the different level, but state legislators make decisions for your state. Your federal legislators make decisions for the entire country. Okay, great. We have a message from Sean. Sean wants to know, when scheduling a meeting with a legislator, what can you do to better your chances of getting a face-to-face? -face? Well, obviously, number one is patience. Um, uh, you'd be surprised as a, a, a member of Congress's schedule will fill up I mean, months in advance. So if you know every year you have, you're in D.C. in August or something for office or trading, you know, January is not too early to start planning that meeting. You know, right now is not too early to plan that meeting. Um, even if you don't quite know who the officers are going to be, um, it's fine to set up that meeting. And let them know that, you know, especially if it's from a local chapter, um, let them know that these are all constituents. These are all people who go to high school in that member of Congress's district. Because, for instance, my boss makes the point, to always meet with anyone from his district who is in Washington and who, who wants a meeting. So you got to be patient, but talk to the scheduler. Most offices still, um, you know, respond to faxed invitations. So faxing a letter to the scheduler, contacting the Washington office, asking who the scheduler is, what's the best way to contact them because every office is different. You know, and being providing as much information as you can to the scheduler. For instance, who the organization is, who are the people in attendance, what your purpose is, what you, you know, why you want to talk to the congressperson, um, and dates and times. If you can be flexible with that, um, you know, let them know. And, but again, if you're not going to be in Washington, um, you can meet with them on the local level because more and more members are starting to spend more time in their district. And so, contact the scheduler and try to set up a meeting in the district if you want to. And you can drive to their district office. And most members have two or three offices back home in their district. And you can try to meet with them when they're down there in the district. That's oftentimes a little easier because it's less demanding um, meeting-wise when they're down in the district um, than when they are in Washington. So they can be a little more flexible. And they don't have votes. So they won't have to race out of the meeting at the last minute um, you know, because of what's going on here. The scheduler in the congressional office, in any office really, um, is your best friend. And you want to be nice to that person <laughs> and send them thank you letters and do everything you can to, to, you know, to develop that relationship because that's your foot. Great. Well, thank you, Brad. That looks like the last question we had for the day. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for their participation today. And please don't mix, miss the next, next webinar, which is scheduled for Wednesday, February 9th at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, this next presentation will be hosted by Greg Oliver, Director of Marketing and Educator Relations, and Lisa Smothers, Membership Director. They will be offering ideas for planning activities for the second half of the membership year, and that will be followed by an open forum so you can get all your questions answered. Great. Thanks again, and I hope everybody has a great week.